Let's talk about the quilting on this little quilt, Prairie Flowers. The first thing that I have done to quilt it is I've stitched in the ditch a straight edge right along the stem there. And I've done that with my feed dogs up and a regular foot on my machine. I have a clear one. I think this one's for embroidery, but it works great for this as well. And I'm going to do that in a matching color thread. I've used a rayon on the top, that's this one, and then I always put cotton in my bobbin. So my rayon thread is about a 40 weight, and my bobbin thread is always um, a 50 or 60 weight thread, thinner, so that the bobbin thread stays down on the bottom when I'm quilting. And then I'm going to do a little stitching up the um, inside of each leaf just to give it a little detail and then I will um, change my thread color and change my um, foot on my machine. So I'm going to do free motion with a darning foot. This is one that I have that has an opening in it. It's clear so it's easy for me to see and to grab my threads because there's an opening in the center there. But the, um, they all work about the same. When I'm doing the flowers, I'm going to switch to um, pink maybe for the pink flowers and purple if it has little purple. And again, I always match my bobbin color when I'm working so that if I'm working with pink thread, I've got pink in the bobbin. And if I'm working with purple, then I've got purple in the bobbin. And that just makes sure that if any of my tension is slightly off, that um, I don't get any threads poking through the top. And I'm going to do that before I put my stamen on. So I will outline quilt, just stitch in the ditch right next to, not on top of that design. If I go nice and slow, it's pretty easy to follow that along. Once I've done the flowers, then I will add in the stamen back on the top here. I'll fuse the little orange stamen in, and that's when I'll also add in the grass at the bottom. I have cut the grass just like we have for several other things. I've done it on the bias so that I don't get any fraying on my edges, and I've used one of those decorative blades. This is the deco blade that I've used this time. It gives a really pretty little edge, and uh, this time I cut my grass out of pink and purple instead of the brown like I did on the original one. You can do any colors that you want, really, because um, prairie grass is lots of different colors. And then I will uh, outline stitch around the stamen, or maybe I could put some little French knots in there. I will do some stitching on top of the grass. I've, I've matched my colors in both cases. And then I have outline stitched right along this bigger wave design on both the inside and the outside edge. And I did that slow, free motion with my feed dogs down so that it's pretty easy to follow along the line. And finally I've done some stippling in the background area. Again, matching the colors when I'm doing that, both top and bottom. And um, that will finish up this little quilt. The quilting on this little quilt. You don't have to quilt it this heavily, but I enjoy the quilting process, so I do that. And then finally to finish this up, I've put a little label on the back. It has a little hanger here at the top. I have um, cut this out with a decorative blade and I fused it right to the back of my little quilt. And notice I actually did this before I did the machine quilting, so the quilting will kind of hold that label in place. But I had to make sure that when I quilted, I pulled this down so that this quilting didn't catch that little um, hanging unit. I like to use three different kinds of thread when I'm quilting, and when I use the different threads, I use different needles as well. So for the rayon thread, I like to use these embroidery needles because they're designed to work with rayon thread. For cotton thread, I like to use quilting needles because they're designed to work with cotton thread. 
And when I use silk or monofilament, I use something called a microtext or a sharp, and they're designed to work with that th kind of thread. And I find that I have better results when I use the right kind of thread with the right kind of needle. So the first thing I do is I take a manual little stitch and I bring my bobbin thread up to the top and then I grab it and pull it to the side because I want to keep track of all my little threads when I'm working and I'm going to then pull it to the back so that I can quilt with this. I will put my needle right back in where it came out of and I'll hold on to those threads and I'm just going to let the machine walk me along the edge of that flower stem. See, I'm not going very fast, and so it's very easy to stay right on the edge of that little design. I'm going to have grass going over this when I'm done, so I'm just going to keep right on going down the end of one side, and when I get to a place I want to stop, I'll take a little pivot, come across with a manual stitch, and then another little pivot, and come up the other side. down here a minute and then I'm going to stop and I'm going to pull my threads out. I'm going to pull my thread to the top and then I'm going to use this little self-threading needle and I will make a knot with both those threads and then I will pull both those threads right through to the center of my quilt, pop it and um, cut the threads that way. That's how I deal with threads when I'm quilting. So I have my pink thread changed out, and I'm going to go right around this little flower, just going very slow and steady. just keep going round and round my little pink flowers and um, until I was done. Thanks for all those terrific tips about how to do free motion work on your um, quilt top, Frida. You are really an expert. I'm impressed. Oh, Laura. Well, you know, the key to machine quilting is practice, practice, practice. <gasps> practice. The more you do it, the better you get. Thanks for joining us on this series of Fused Art Quilts from the Chicago School of Fusing. Press on. Press on.